So here I am logged into Silverfin. And the first thing to point out is that I have logged in with my username and password through the Chrome browser in this case. So it's worth calling out that Silverfin is completely cloud-based. Um, it probably goes without saying, but actually some of the, the well-established vendors in the UK market still aren't cloud-based. So that uh, ability to work in the cloud and from any device is something that's relatively unique to Silverfin. Now, when I first log in, I get some key links here. So I can jump into my inbox. I can jump into my client list. But what I tend to do is use the Google style search bar here. And if there's a particular client I'm looking for, I would just begin to type their name and pull up that client record. So what we're seeing here is the file for Jet Set Go. Now, this is a limited company who uses Xero as their bookkeeping software. And as we've discussed before, there would be a live connection to the data that's coming in from that instance of Xero. So what you're seeing here in terms of the financial position, in terms of these key metrics, that data is updating automatically on an ongoing basis. Now, in terms of the layout of the file, what you can see is there's currently three jobs or workflows that are open for this particular client. We've got the UK working papers job for a limited company. We've got the accounts production job, which in this case would be FRS 1021A. And we've got a UK corporation tax job. Now with the working papers, that's currently at 58% completion. And that is at that level because we have completed eight of 13 reconciliations. We've done eight of 17 checks and we can see that there's some completed as well as some uncompleted to-dos that are currently on that job. Now, it's worth mentioning that with the accounts production job and with the corporate tax job, there's also some progress being made there with them both sitting at around 55%. Now, the reason that those jobs are at that level is not because somebody's gone in and has been actively working on those jobs. It might be purely based on the work that's occurred in the working papers job. So even if I hadn't opened accounts production yet, it might be at 56% completion just because that data, that information that I'm processing in working papers is flowing through to that area and populating my financial statement. And in this case, my corporate tax return. The other thing to mention on the client homepage is the ability to follow files. So you can see that I'm currently following this file, which means that even if I was a manager, not necessarily the person working on the file itself, I could follow it and I would be included in any key notifications relating to this file. But let's start by opening up the working papers job. So what you'll see here is essentially our working papers template for a limited company. Now this template has been designed based on the way that my firm likes to work. And you can see all the different schedules, all the different account types that are included in this particular template. If you wanted to see some of the other ones that aren't currently included, anything with a gray star is an optional item that I could pull in for this particular client, but it wouldn't be included in the template as default. So for example, if I wanted to do um, cash flow reporting, I could just tick that star and it would be included for this particular client. Now, the working papers operates based on a traffic light system. So anywhere that there's a green dot shows me that this particular account has been reconciled. Anywhere that there's a red triangle, I know that it's either not reconciling or that there's some missing information, some work to be done there. Anything that has a blue square next to it shows me that there's a check assigned to that particular working paper. And anything that has a speech bubble will have either some comments or some to-dos attached to it, which I could potentially review there. So perhaps what we'll do is look at a couple of examples of the working papers that come up quite regularly as questions. And we'll start with the fixed asset register. So if I open up my fixed asset register here, again, this information is all pulling in directly from zero on a live basis. And we can see that in this case, um, the client has three classes for plant and machinery, vehicles, and computer equipment. And at a glance, I can see that two of those are reconciling, but at the moment, the plant and machinery is, is currently not reconciled to the trial balance. So let's jump into computer equipment and have a look at the detail there. 
Now, all of the line items in computer equipment have pulled through, and I can see the details for those. I can also see um, for this one here that there's a document or a note attached to it. Now, documents will be pulled through from zero, but they would generally sit at the client level. However, if I had the invoice for this printer ink line item, I could potentially add that to the line item by picking that document up from my local machine and attaching it to Silverfin. And you can see then we have the, uh, the document icon attached there. Now we can also add entries at this stage. So if there's something that doesn't appear in zero, but something that I've been made aware of by the client, I could add that as an entry myself within Silverfin. Perhaps it's an iPhone. What are we on now? Um, I don't know, let's say 12. And let's say that that's worth a thousand pounds. What's now gonna happen, because I've added that line item, is that you'll have seen where I had my reconciled green dot. I'm now showing a red triangle. So that tells me that we're no longer reconciling to zero. And the best way to explain that is that while we ingest data from zero on a live basis, we don't push adjustments back to zero automatically. The reason for that is that we want you to think of zero as your source of truth, and we want you to think of Silverfin as the working file. So what we would tend to do once the job's at the stage of completion is we would come to the adjustments area within Silverfin. We would then give you the option to download all of those adjustments in a format that Zero recognizes. They can be uploaded into Zero in bulk, and you can then mark those as posted. So that happens once the job is complete. Now, another working paper that we get asked about fairly regularly is prepayments. So if I was to pull up my prepayments working paper here, the first thing that we're gonna see here is the current balance for this account. We can see that balance before adjustments, after adjustments. There's also this nice chart that shows us the historic profile of the account. So we can see how that's evolved over time. And one of the great things about having the link to zero is that we can also, from within the working paper, view the ledger information. So if we want to get the detail behind these numbers, we don't have to go back to zero to do that. We can access that information through Silverfin. Again, you can see all of your line items for the prepayments. I can see any documents attached to that. And the other thing that we would recommend you do is when you first come to sync a client with Silverfin, that you would sync at least two years worth of data. The reason we recommend you do that is because you can then scroll down and you can see a comparative reconciliation for the prior period. So I can see how things have changed over time. If I was doing monthly reporting for the client, I could select on a month to month basis, the period that I want to compare with. But in this case, I can see that there's a vehicle insurance prepayment that was there for the prior period that's not there for the current period. So this is a great example of where we might add a comment to the file as a preparer. Now on the right hand side, we have this communication panel where anyone can look at a file and they can see all the comments and all of the to do's that have been set against that file. So if I wanted to add a new message, I could perhaps tag internal, or I could tag the person who's gonna be reviewing this file. If I was to tag internal, by the way, that would notify everybody who's following the file of this particular comment. And what I'm gonna say in this case is um, no insurance, prepayment this year as paid monthly. Now, these notes do tend to build up over time. So what I might also do is I might just tag the note to say that it's a point relating to manager review. But you can see how, if it was a point relating to a client query, I could apply that tag. And these tags can be built to look however you want them to look. But the idea there is that when this file goes to my manager for review, the manager is gonna be able to filter those comments to say, I just want to see things with the manager review tag. And it cuts out all of the noise. Equally, 
if this was um, a point, a review point, which we wanted the, the reviewer to be able to action, we could actually set it as a to do rather than a comment, in which case that point would have to be cleared before we can get to 100% completion on this file. The other thing that you'll see in my communication panel is that with this particular working paper, there's a check that's associated to it. Now we can integrate the Mercia checklist methodology into Silverfin, but in this case, it's just a one-off check that's been embedded into the working paper template. And as the preparer, I can just tick a box to say that I'm happy to put my name to that check. Once I'm done, I can hit prepared by where it's gonna change the status of that particular working paper to tag it with my name and with the date that I prepared the file. And then I might jump to the main workflow. And if I was now at a stage where I felt that was ready for review, I could change the status of this workflow to say it's now ready for first review by my manager and perhaps tag them in saying we're ready to go.